Today, I'm gonna to show you how to color grade video in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And this episode is all about color grading in Photoshop. And it's actually one part of a four part series we're doing on working with video in Photoshop. So in part one, we went over all the basics of video editing in Photoshop. We showed you how to import footage into Photoshop, how to work with your timeline and your layers. We even showed you a little bit about clipping and working with keyframes in your video. Now in this video, we're gonna pick up right where we left off and show you how to color grade the footage that you brought into Photoshop. So if you haven't watched the first video in this series, be sure to do so. It's gonna get you caught up to where we're at right now, and it's also gonna show you how to download the videos that we're using to make this episode. So you can do it on your own. You can follow along with us because you can actually download these very clips. So just click on your screen right now. It'll take you back to the other episode. Watch that one and come back and hang out with me again. So as you probably know, there are a lot of programs out there that already edit video very well. Things like Premiere, Final Cut Pro, After Effects, and even iMovie. So why are we using Photoshop to edit video? There's two reasons. One, because Photoshop offers video editing. So I'm a person who teaches Photoshop for a living, so I wanted to teach you that. And two, which is actually a little bit more uh, useful to you guys, is for things like color grading and adding filters, which in my opinion, I think Photoshop actually does a great job when it comes to color grading because you can use Photoshop as you would normally use Photoshop for an image except apply it to video. So again, Photoshop is not the only way to do this and a professional video editor might use a different program. But if you're in Photoshop and you wanna use Photoshop, well, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, when it comes to color grading in Photoshop, there are two ways to think about what you wanna get done. There's a local adjustment, which is just going to affect one clip. Then you have a global adjustment, which is going to affect everything. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do both. Let's start off with our local adjustment, which just affects one clip. All right, so jumping here into Photoshop, we've got our timeline here on the bottom. And in the first episode in this series, we went and we actually created this timeline. Now we're gonna start working with it as though we were video editors. Well, this clip is awesome. I, I really like this clip. She's really cute, hanging out on the bed, and it's definitely going to make it into the final cut. But let's say we wanted to make some adjustments to this clip. Well, here's how we do it. Basically, we go into our video group and we find our layer. We said, this says Flurn Sample Video 2. I'm gonna click right here on Flurn Sample Video 2, and you're going to see it's going to highlight that section of video. So now let's say we wanna apply a color adjustment on just this little section of video. All we have to do is go to our adjustment layers, and in this case, I'm gonna go up to where we see curves. There we go. We've got a curves adjustment layer, the same like you would normally do when you're editing a photo in Photoshop, only now it's going to edit video. So let's go ahead and bring our curves, just well, let's bring it down a little bit. There we go. We'll wind up changing this, just wanna do something simple to start off with. So we've brought our curves adjustment layer down. Now, here in our layers panel, you're going to see that our curves adjustment layer is clipped to Flurn Sample Video 2. Automatically, by the way, it will automatically clip to Flurn Sample Video 2, which means it's only affecting our Flurn Sample Video 2. It's only affecting this one. So I can turn this off and on, and you're gonna see as I play from the beginning to the end, there we go. It's affecting the entire clip, making it a little bit darker. I can turn this off and hit play, and now we see our clip without being a little bit darker. So this is what's called a local adjustment. In other words, it's just affecting one clip. But we don't have to stop with the curves adjustment layer because that's super easy, right? That's like play school time. We can do other cool stuff. So let's go ahead and click on this curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna delete that really quick. Yep. And now let's try a different adjustment layer. I'm gonna go down to something cool like invert. There we go, that's kind of cool. So I'm inverting the video that's on this layer. So let's hit play. And See what that looks like now. Okay, looks kind of weird, but let's keep going and see what we can do. I'm gonna grab another adjustment layer and now let's go to something like black and white. Okay, and that's going to clip on our subject as well. So let's hit play right now. And here we have our video inverted with black and white. And you know what, that invert, that didn't look so good. Let's, let's make that invisible. And now we just have the black and white. So let's go ahead and hit play. And there we go. This bit of footage is now black and white. Now, as I let it play, let's go ahead and get to the end here. 
let it play all the way to the end, you can see our next clip is Flurn Sample Video 3, which is here, which does not have any clipping masks on it. It has no black and white layer. It has no invert layer. So this layer, this video sample right here, is going to play as though it were completely normal, because it is. It doesn't have any local adjustments applied to it. So here is this layer done in black and white now, and then the very next clip is now back to its original. So that's a local adjustment. It's just going to affect one clip. So if you feel pretty good about local adjustments with video, you can start using them because it's the same kind of thing that we've been doing in Photoshop when it comes to still images. Now, let's talk about global adjustments. So by now you're probably familiar with adjustment layers because we've been using them like forever here on Florin.com to edit still images. So you just use the same things you were using for still images now on video, which in my opinion is actually really great. So that's local, it's just affecting one of the clips. So let's go ahead and take a look at what global adjustments do, which is going to affect everything. So let's go ahead and delete our black and white and our invert layer, because that wound up not working out too well, especially the invert. Um, let's say, so now we have our clip, it's right back to how it was, which is great. Now let's say we want to, instead of just having this video layer be black and white, let's say we want the entire thing to be black and white. Well, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and close our video group. There we go. And now I'm gonna create an adjustment layer that's gonna be black and white. And you're gonna see it's going to load on top of our video group, meaning that it's going to affect everything that's under our video group. So if I hit play here, there we go. We can see this clip onto the next clip, onto the next clip. Every single clip that's going to play now is going to be black and white because we have a black and white adjustment layer above everything else. Now, we can use this again, just like we would be working in Photoshop. Let's say I had a layer mask and I wanted to use a gradient on our layer mask. I, I don't know why I wanna do this. I'm just giving you an example here. Um, there we go. So now I have a gradient layer mask, black on the bottom and white on the top with a black and white adjustment layer. So now when I hit play, on our video, there we go. We can see the top of my layer is now black and white and the bottom of it is in color. Let's see it, let's do a better example. There we go. Top, we are in black and white and the bottom is in color. So again, this may not be what you, <laughs> this may not be what you're trying to get done in the video, but you can use it just as you were using the adjustment layers for still images, but applied to video. Okay, cool, let's give one more example. Now in this clip of the video, she is twirling her green dress all around the place and it looks awesome. So I don't want a black and white adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, okay? Let's go ahead and grab an adjustment layer and maybe I'll go to hue saturation. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose our greens. There we go. And I'm gonna bring our saturation up on our greens. Maybe we'll change the hue a little bit too. Bring it a little bit more towards, there we go. A little bit more towards cyan. So when I hit play on this, episode now, you can see my greens are now completely affected. But that's not going to only affect this layer. It's going to affect any time I've got green in my entire timeline, all these greens are going to change color. There we go. So if I have any other clips where you can see the dress, let's make that visible and invisible, it's now going to affect the greens throughout my entire image, which is great for local adjustments. And now we're going to show you how to use, basically how to color grade an entire image or an entire movie. All right, so we've done black and white. I showed you how to take a green, make it saturated and make it teal. Now let's just do a simple levels adjustment layer that applies some color grading to our entire video. So let's go ahead and head back to our videos here. We have a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm gonna click and drag that to the trash. So our video is back to how it started. Okay, now we're going to grab an adjustment layer. I'm gonna to go to levels, and I'm just gonna give us a very simple color grade. We're gonna to go to our blue channel, and we're gonna click here and drag in from the bottom, which is gonna introduce some blue into my shadows. There we go, we can see. Let's just make this invisible and visible so we can see what we're doing as we go. So we're putting some blue into our shadows there, and I'm gonna put some yellow into our highlights. Now, if you've learned how to color grade or work with colors on flern.com for still images, you can apply the exact same thing for video, which is great. Okay, so let's just turn this off and on and see what that looks like. That's our levels adjustment layer and everything looks great. So if I hit play, 
we're going to see that my levels adjustment layer, my color grading, is now applied to the entire clip. So whether I have video from the beginning of the shoot or from the end of the shoot, it's all going to get color graded the exact same way, turning this off and back on. Now let's say we wanted to only have that effect part of our photo shoot. Maybe we wanted to just affect like the first half of our photo shoot and then we want our color grading to change. Well, I have my levels adjustment layer here as basically a video layer, just like I've got my video group. And I can grab the end of it and say, you know what, I only want this to be visible till right there. That way, the footage before this little play bar is going to be color graded. Footage afterwards is immediately back to its norm. So you can make these color adjustment layers and then choose where they're going to be applied in the video. And that's how we color grade video in Photoshop. Just remember to think of it in two different ways. First, you have your local adjustments, which are just going to happen on one clip. Next, you have your global adjustments, which you can place on top of everything and have it affect your entire movie. And then just work with your adjustment layers like you would normally do on a still image. So color grading in Photoshop is really easy to do, and it's one of the ways in which Photoshop really does shine as a video editor. Now, the other thing that I really like about Photoshop when it comes to editing video is the ability to apply filters onto your clips. So let's go ahead and show you how that works. Basically, I'm gonna start off with our Flurn Sample Video 2. We're gonna work with this clip here. And as you can see, it's a totally normal clip, nothing special about it just yet. Next, we're gonna go back to our layers. I'm gonna go to Flurn Sample Video 2, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go over here to where it says convert to a smart object. Now, in order for you to apply a filter on a video in Photoshop has to be a smart object first. So convert to smart object. There we go. It's gonna take a second. Now you can see instead of a film strip, we have a smart object there and we're ready to apply a filter onto this layer. All right, so let's go ahead and apply a filter. I'm gonna go up to filter and then down here to where I see filter gallery. And this is gonna give me a great preview of what I'm actually going to see with my video. Now, right now, I'm just gonna see one frame. It, uh, I don't get to see the entire thing, unfortunately, but I can figure out about what it's going to look like. Now, you have a lot of different options here in your filters. We could try something like a cutout, a dry brush technique, whatever these are, they're going to be applied to the entire video. I'm gonna stick with cutout here, and I'm gonna bring up my levels. And basically, this is gonna make it look like a piece of art, like a piece of, uh, there we go, a little piece of pop art that's going to be applied to a movie. In my opinion, that's actually really awesome um, because it, it's gonna make it look a little bit more like an animation. So let's just go ahead and adjust our levels here. Five, that looks pretty good there. Um, you can always change any of these filters at any point in time, by the way. So let's go ahead and figure out, you know what? We'll stick with five, that looks pretty good. So it's going to apply this filter. Right now we just have a preview of it still. Let's hit okay there. And it applies this as a smart filter to Flurn Sample Video 2. So now if I scroll back to the beginning here and hit play, we can see that Photoshop is rendering out this video with the filter applied to it, which is awesome. Now it's taking a little bit longer than it normally would because it has to render this video as it's going. So we can see it's going a little bit slow. Now, after it has this green line right above the video, that means it is rendered that area. So over here, let's just hit our stop key. Over here has not been rendered, rendered but over here has been rendered. So now if I want to play it back again, it'll do it in real time. There we go. And there we have a cutout filter applied to video in Photoshop, which in my opinion is awesome. And if you wanna do the same thing to all of your clips, just convert them all to smart objects and run the same filter on all of them and you'll be good to go. All right, cool. So that's how we apply filters onto our videos in Photoshop. Now let's go ahead and get rid of that because I'm not gonna keep it in there for the final. So I'm gonna click on my smart filter and drag that to the trash can. There we are. And you can see my footage is back to normal. So it's not permanent, which is also great. Now let's go ahead and close our video group down. I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and go to levels. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little bit of color grading. We're gonna bring up our blues in our shadows, bring some yellows into our highlights there. All right, and we're gonna go to greens and do the same thing. Okay, let's go ahead and close that down and then we'll zoom out so we can see everything. 
So this levels adjustment layer is providing color grading. And it's visible on our entire movie here. So if there are any other areas that look good, maybe I want to change. We've got some piano keys going on there. Maybe, you know what, in this video, I want this to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to click on this one here, go back to my layers option, my layers panel. I have Florin Sample Video 7. So here we've got our Sample Video 7 clicked, and here we've got it clicked again. Now I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We'll go up to levels again, and I'm going to click here in the center and just brighten that up just a little bit. Or you know what? I'm going to brighten up my highlights just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to pull my shadows in just a little bit as well. OK, so now we have this adjustment layer visible on just that clip. But we also have our levels adjustment layer visible on everything. So this is going to get a double whammy. If I go ahead and play, we can see now it's adjusted here with our levels adjustment layer 2, as well as getting the levels adjustment layer on the top, which color grades our video. So you'll be able to go in and adjust specific clips to make sure that everything flows together very well and then color grade your entire footage on top of your video group one. That's a lot to say, but I hope you get it. I hope you got it all, because I'm not saying it again, but you can always rewind. All right, and that's how we color grade and add filters in Photoshop. Just remember these key steps when you're doing it on your own. First, think about color grading in two ways. You have your local adjustments and your global adjustments. Your local adjustments are only going to affect individual clips, while your global adjustments will affect the entire video. Now, if you're interested in adding filters to your video, you have to create a smart object. So to do so, simply right click on your video layer and go to convert to smart object. And then from there, you guys can apply filters from the filter gallery in Photoshop. All right, guys, that's it for part two. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a ton. I hope you're having some fun with me. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you want to learn more about Photoshop and photography, just click on your screen right now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week, and you don't have to do anything except click on your screen right now. And if you have an idea for a new episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, please leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. Cool. I think we're good to go. Bam. That's the good to go sign, in case you didn't know. Just do that to anyone and they know you're good to go.